So let's look at the effects of finite op amp gain. In an ideal op amp, it has infinite gain. Actual op amp devices have very large but finite voltage gains. So let's address the effect of large but finite gain on the input and output relationships associated with op amp circuits. Here we have a figure showing an op amp circuit model with finite gain. Its input resistance here, Ri, is given as infinite. Now the actual values of op amp input resistance range from 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 12 ohms. So no important effect is left out by ignoring this resistance and for an ideal case when the resistance is infinite the input resistance that implies that IP the current going to the non-inverting input is equal to IN the current going to the inverting input is equal to zero and we note that VP is equal to VN only when there's a infinite gain associated with the ideal op amp. Now when we examine this circuit we see that the non-inverting input voltage is determined by the independent voltage source. So here's our non-inverting input VP and it's connected to a voltage source we'll call V S. Now the inverting input given as Vn can be found by voltage division since the current In is equal to zero. So in other words there's no current going into the input so here In is equal to zero so all of the current going through R2 goes through R1. So therefore, we note that VP is equal to VS as we discussed earlier and VN in terms of VO is just a voltage division of R1 over R1 plus R2. Now, we determine the output voltage in terms of the controlled source voltage where we use voltage division on the series connection of the three resistors RO, R2, and R1. So therefore VO is simply equal to R1 plus R2 all over the sum of those resistance RO plus R1 plus R2 times A times VP minus VN quantity as shown here. Now we substitute VP and VN into this equation and we have VO is equal to R1 plus R2 all over R0 plus R1 plus R2 times A and then we substitute VP for VS and we substitute VN for R2 over R1 plus R2 VO. Now we note that VO appears on both sides of this equation because of the feedback effect and therefore we can solve for VO which yields the following. VO is equal to A R1 plus R2 all over R0 plus R2 plus R1 all over and multiply that is by 1 plus A and multiply by Vs. Now let's look when A approaches infinity. So as A in this expression approaches infinity we see that this term here in the denominator dominates R0 and R2 and it dominates 1 as well when A is compared to 1. 
So that leaves in the denominator r1 times a, which in fact means that a over r1 plus r2 is equal to a times r1 times vs. We see the a's cancel for large gain again. Remember this is an approximation as a's approaches infinity and then we see that vo is equal to r1 over r1 plus r2 over r1 times vs which is just 1 plus r2 over r1 times vs which is just equal to k vs. Our closed loop gain is given as k. Note our open loop gain is a and our closed loop gain is k which has feedback. So this value of k is what we calculated earlier for a non-inverting op amp. That's ideal. Now to see the effect of a that is it's finite let's ignore RO for the moment in this equation when we do that we know that it's generally quite small when compared with R1 plus R2 now with this approximation when we ignore RO which is a lot smaller than R1 or R2 then this implies that VO is equal to K all over 1 plus K over A times VS. So here we have an expression that includes the closed loop gain K and the open loop gain A. So when we write this form we see that the closed loop gain reduces to k as a approaches infinity. So when a approaches infinity, we still have k. Now we see that the finite gain model yields a good approximation to the ideal model as long as k is smaller, much smaller than a. In other words, that the closed loop gain is a lot smaller than the open loop gain. And that's usually the case that we've seen so far. A good practical rule of thumb is to limit the closed loop gain to be less than 1% of the op amp gain. That is K is less than A greater than 100. So this is our like 1% rule of thumb. Now the feedback also affects the active output resistance and we'll see that next. In fact that will be discussed in the next video.